On today's episode of All Things Man, we will be talking about a very important animal in Kemet. After all, we were called last or two guests. Today, we're talking turtles. I'm very pleased to have on the feeding cell today, Mr. Paul Chin from the Department of Environment. Before we get into our conversation about turtles, will you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at the Department of Environment? Alrighty, Phoenix. Well, it's, uh, it's a pleasure here to be on the Phoenix Zone, and um, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Paul Chin. Uh, I'm a research officer here. Um, so um, I, I dabble in a little bit of everything where it's coral reefs, uh, lobsters, turtles, uh, fish, um, anything to do with the marine life I'm, mm -hmm. I'm involved in. I collect data, I analyze that data, I process that data, and um, I've been involved in numerous papers that's been published. Um, so all that information is actually out uh, on the internet and it's available. Some of that is actually internal and is kept okay. at the Department of Environment that we're actually keeping together for a, a long-term survey. Um, some of our surveys, like the turtle program, has been going on for over 20 years. Um, so we keep that data and that way we can compare from uh, to, um, from 1998 um, to, to current. So a lot of that data is, has been compiled. I've been here for uh, about 15 years. Um, turtles is actually one of my specialties is actually how I started out with the department. I started out as an intern helping out with the turtle program uh, in 2004. Um, I went to University of uh, Essex where I majored <clears throat> and I got a bachelor's and a master's in um, marine and freshwater biology and I started full-time with the department in 2009 where I um, eventually ended up spearheading the uh, turtle program. Um, I'm also involved in almost every other program that's in the, um, in the department so um, uh, a lot of the times I'm actually out in the field. Um, I re some, some times of the year um, I rarely spend time at my desk but uh, um, there's a saying around the uh, old saying that says that if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. And um, I'm actually living that saying. I actually don't work a day in my life because uh, my job uh, is almost not like work. It's, uh, it's a fantastic place to be. So you're the one that researches, kind of? Yes, correct. Okay. Now, what are the type of turtles that live in Cayman? So um, we have three species of turtles that um, are in Cayman's waters. Um, that's the green sea turtle, the loggerhead turtle and the hawksbill turtle. Um, historically, we've had um, leatherback pass through here, um, but that was a long time ago. I, it was a, a, a sort of a very rare and random occurrence, um, but those three are the ones that are in our waters. The ones that are live around here are, um, are smaller turtles. They're not from here, but they live here. Um, this is where they feed, this is where they grow. Uh, eventually they'll go back to where they're they're from yeah, yeah. right yeah. so then the ones that come here were born here but they don't live here so they come yeah. here to nest so how can you tell the difference between the hawks bill and all the other and things? the other ones okay so they're um physical features um obviously uh, is the first one that you want to look for um and it's uh, the most prominent one the easiest one to find um the hawksbill has um it's got it, it's got its name from um its its mouth it has a beak like um feature where it uses to graze on sponges and so forth um that has a, a very glamorous shell as it were uh the green ones um they get their name because they're actually green uh because like a flamingo a flamingo when they're born they're born white and they eat a lot of shrimp and crustaceans where they, eventually their coat becomes pink green turtle is very similar they eat a lot of seagrass so their their blubber and their fat becomes green and that way their appearance becomes green mm -hmm. the loggerhead now um also his physical appearance is um, very also very unique where he has a massive head that's why it's called a loggerhead uh in some cases uh their head can be about a third the size of their body and the reason for that is because they eat a lot of um shellfish so um I, I, if you can imagine a conch it can put its uh, a conch in between its jaws and crush the shell and get the conch out of it so they're very, very, very unique uh, um, creatures, which all have very unique um, individual characteristics about them. So, the hawksbill has like 
a beak. Uh, yeah, it looks yeah. like a beak. Kind of, that's why it's called a hawk because it has a beak that looks kind of like a hawk. And then the green sea turtle is kind of more greenish. Uh, exactly. And then the last turtle, which is the loggerhead, right. has a huge head. A huge head. Exactly. You got it right. Nailed it. Well, that's why it's called a loggerhead. A loggerhead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is the fourth turtle a hickety turtle? Yeah, so we do have hickety turtles here in our in our freshwater ponds around um, around the island. Um, the most distinguishing feature about them is also their size. The size of a hickety turtle is um, nowhere near the size of a of a, a marine turtle. And um, the most distinguishing feature is that um, the marine turtles have flippers or fins, and uh, the hickety has feet. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. And oh, another distinguishing feature ab uh, about the turtles, which is not known uh, commonly um, about the difference in the turtles, is the number of scoots. So they have hexagonal patterns on the back of their shells yeah. where um, there's a certain um, number of, um, of scoots um, um, that are specific to each turtle. A loggerhead will have five scoots down the side, five scoots down the middle and five scoots down the other side. So it's okay. a pattern of five, five, and five. Whilst a green turtle will have four scoots down the side, um, five scoots down the middle, and four scoots down the other side. Now as babies, the loggerheads and the hawksbills look quite similar. And the only way to tell the difference is those scoots. So the hawksbill will have scoots, scoot patterns like a green, which is four, five, and four, mm -hmm. but they'll look very, very similar to a, a loggerhead. Okay, yeah. Right? And they, um, the green babies are uh, in a league of their own. They look completely different mm -hmm. and they have a very specific scoot pattern, which is similar to the hawksbill. How often do um, leatherback turtles appear in the same end? Um, I, that is a very good question. Um, the occurrence that happened was um, they believe that the leatherback uh, just came up on the beach and attempted to nest and that was quite a number of years ago, a couple of decades ago. This was before I was even in the program. And um, it was just a historical um, sighting. Um, it doesn't happen very often. It happens more so on the Eastern Caribbean, sort of like um, um, Trinidad and yeah. so forth and, and, and those areas down in that side. So um, we don't get them here very often. The, we, we have seen them and some of the divers have seen them in passing. So they're, they're going uh, probably in transit to where they're from. Because um, what happens is that when the babies are born, they crawl down the beach, they enter the currents, and then they end up in, living in some uh, sargassum or some seaweeds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of swirl around in the currents for a while until they're big enough to defend for themselves. And then they end up somewhere where they can forage and feed until they're big enough, like I mentioned earlier, with the turtles that actually live here. So um, when they're passing to go back to where they're originally from, um, they get ended up getting sighted sometimes. So even though whether back turtles come here so, or came here where are they usually from the eastern caribbean is predominant so we got <clears throat> barbados trinidad um uh, East, uh, trinidad is very 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 prominent for that type mm -hmm. type of thing um costa rica also i believe um the galapagos islands also has okay. them as well so but they don't pass through here so we have a very very small island and um the the surface area or the coastal area I should say is uh, is, is small and our um, nesting population is growing um, so we don't have a lot of real estate and um, leatherback turtles can get extremely large uh, we're talking seven feet in diameter so they they're very very big turtles so are all turtles like born with a shell or without a shell so um, when they're born they're born with a shell but the shell is quite soft um, because um they almost have, have a shape of a C because uh, an egg is, is a circular. So um, they have to conform to the shape of the egg. So they have to be soft in order to, uh, to fit in the egg. And they're born with a shell. And eventually they'll flatten out and the shell will harden over time. If you just tap on their shell, would they feel it? Um, not necessarily. Um, they're quite resilient to um, injuries and, and so forth. Um, if you think about turtles have been around for millions of years and their, their anatomy and everything is, um, has, is basically unchanged. Um, when you tap on their shell, it almost sounds like it's hollow, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, and you give it a little bit of a tap, 
and it's almost like you can hear the echo yeah, like amongst the echo. organs inside of their body. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 a very um very strange and uh, unique sound. And um, there's been times where we've had misoriented turtles, um, where um, they're trying to go upland, and you kind of tap on their shell just to kind of give them a little bit of a a little bit of a push to say, hey, you're going in the wrong direction. You got to go the other way. So okay. yeah, it gives it a little bit of a a little bit of an echo. So what harms the sea turtle population? So um, sea turtle population right now, um, we are actually exploring the um, effects of climate change mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the population because um, heat is very um, important in the life cycle of a turtle. Um, more so the beginning of the life cycle of a turtle. Um, heat determines the length of incubation um, when the eggs are, are laid in the sand. Heat also determines the gender. Um, we found that um, 29 degrees Celsius gives us um, an equal ratio of males to females okay. and um, hotter temperatures usually yield more females. Yeah. So with increases in temperatures and climate change and so forth, we're, um, we're thinking that it's possible that the, the clutches um, that the turtles are, are laying are yielding more females than males. Oh, um, okay, yeah. So that affects the population ratios uh, in terms of the population um, numbers. Um, usually man-made man, uh, man effects, anthropogenic impacts are usually um, uh, the issue. We have development where they lose um, nesting beaches, you know, the hotels and the houses and so forth that go on the coastline. You end up losing nesting areas where, because that's mm -hmm. where they, they lay their nests. Um, you have um, fishermen, um, you have boats, and so forth. Um, sometimes you have boat strikes um, and, and ends up damaging the turtle's shell. And, and then, um, sometimes they can survive it. As I mentioned earlier, they're very resilient. They've, there's been some instances where they've been struck by a boat and still survive. Um, there's also, um, in the Cayman Islands particularly, um, we're a very traditional turtle-consuming country where um, turtle meat was um, a very big part of our culture. Um, you know, passing ships used to come here to replenish their stocks to um, of, of meat and so forth. So um, you have people who still believe that the turtle meat, the wild turtle meat, is a very, um, it's a good delicacy to have, even though it's readily available at a turtle farm. Um, that's one of our big issues. And also, um, traditionally, the eggs were also a delicacy. But with the availability of chicken eggs and the, the ease of being able to go to the supermarket, that those impacts are a little bit less. But... Um, Man-made impacts are usually the issue, and you got fishing line where turtles get wrapped up in fishing line uh, pollution. Mm -hmm. um, you got um, uh, the the soda can wrappers, the um, yeah. the binders that they yeah. go around the necks, um, plastic bags. Um, some turtles uh, actually eat jellyfish. You know, so yeah. um, when they um, when you see a plastic bag floating in the oh. ocean, it kind of looks it, like a jellyfish kind of going, and they eat it. And what happens is is that they get stopped. It, get stuck in their throats and they're no longer able to consume um, anything else because the plastic bag is stuck in, stuck in their throat and they, um, they die from basically starvation essentially. So basically it's the humans, the boats, pollution. Pollution, yep. Yeah, okay. And climate change is impacting as well, you know, um, rising um, water levels, we're losing habitats again, uh, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of things that happen. Um, uh, guess what? And believe it or not, nature plays its own um, its own role as well because turtles, like everything in the food chain, has its predators. Yeah. So right? like so sharks. Sharks, fish. big fish, yeah. birds, crabs, certain states in the U.S., you have raccoons. You know, um, so it, it's, it's just all a part of life. And that's actually why turtles lay as many um, mm -hmm. eggs and have as many babies as they have. Because you want to try to have as many babies as you can to try to increase the number of survivors. So a turtle can lay anywhere between 800 and 1,000 eggs per season mm -hmm. just so they can have one or two that survive to be the size of their mom. What key many laws are there that people should know about turtles and turtle eggs? Right. So that's a very a very good question. So um, the capture of um, m uh, large turtles, um, whether in land or in sea, is actually illegal unless you um, possess a, a, a turtle fishing license. And only a handful of those were handed out by the Department of Environment to traditional turtle fishermen. Yeah. And um, those are not able to be grandfathered down. So like, say, for example, you know, 
your grandpa was a turtle fisherman he's he cannot now hand that license down to you so um once he has that license that license is specific to him so it's only like for him he can't give yes, it to anybody to else. anyone else exactly exactly so um if he's too old to go fishing then that's it he can't just he can't go fishing um so if you're caught with um with a turtle or turtle eggs um you can actually be prosecuted and um if found guilty you can be fined fined up to five hundred thousand dollars and uh four years in prison uh depending on the severity of the um of the incident and if there were any sort of vehicles whether it be boats or cars involved in the incident those can be repossessed as well so you can lose your your vehicles you can go to jail and you can owe a lot of money so um yeah this these are things that you that you you gotta know when you're doing these things and um so you there is um if there is anyone who's still able to do turtle fishing there is a season for it you're allowed to catch turtles outside of april 1st and november 30th um so that's the um legal time that you're able to take the the turtles outside of that it's it's completely illegal if you do consume turtle um the meat that is it is readily available on island um at the uh, the turtle center fine so it, like you said earlier, earlier, like a way earlier on <laughs> in the interview, that tur sea turtles eat sargasm. Sure, not sargasm, but seaweed. S sea, yeah, seagrass. Is there anything else that they would eat? The green turtles, um, that's predominantly what they eat. And that's prob and that's why you find, if you go to um, certain beaches, you find them um, hanging around there because seagrass is predominant. So that's what they eat. They're pr predominantly vegetarian. Some turtles are omnivorous. Um, at the hawks bill are omnivorous. They're the ones that actually eat sponges as well as as um, jellies. Yeah. Um, but the the loggerhead, loggerheads are I, are predominantly um, carnivorous, so they they they'll eat the um, the conch and so forth. Yeah. All right, Mr. Phoenix, thank you very much for having me on your show, and thank I you. wish you all the best. And thank, thank you, you so much for talking. With no problem. Thank you very much. I'm the Phoenix Line, open